Now, you can be a dope cinematographer, a dope director, you can be a king or queen of composition, or you can be a colorist connoisseur, but there is one thing that most people don't like about the creative process, and that's editing. Now, I'm not here to tell you that today's sponsor, which is Loop Deck, is going to make editing go away, but they did send me a new CT unit, which is a speed editor, which actually makes the process a heck of a lot faster. But hear me out. Now, if you haven't had a speed editor before, the entire point of it is to put all of your hot keystrokes or any shortcuts that you want to make editing easier and put it into one device. Now, with this, you can make custom profiles depending on the program you're going to be using. Now, I use DaVinci Resolve, and I actually have made a couple of custom profiles in the Loop Deck CT in order for it to work in different pages that I would have in my process. So I do have some presets and some keystrokes and hotkeys that I have when I'm editing, when I'm cutting down footage. And I also have a little bit when I'm delivering some footage or I'm exporting some stuff. And I also have some for color grading, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. But what's really cool is that you could set up custom profiles depending on the program you're going to use, and the Loop Deck actually knows when you're using each one. So when I open up DaVinci Resolve and I start editing some footage down, I'm able to use some of the controls that I've already preset or the ones that already come with the CT itself, and I'm able to make the process really easy right off the bat without having to do anything at all. Now, you probably already have an editing program between Premiere Pro or Final Cut or even DaVinci Resolve like I do, and you might have already had keyboard strokes and hotkeys already set up, which also might kind of beg the question as to why you need this thing in the first place. If you already have things that are already programmed to your keyboard, doesn't that make this a little bit redundant? And I'm actually gonna tell you that it does make the process even faster because you could set up things like your hotkeys onto the loop deck itself. Now, I use DaVinci Resolve when I'm editing my YouTube videos, and sometimes I record externally, and then I sync things up in post, and then I link the clips, which sometimes takes a lengthy process. In order for me to sync up the audio to my FX30 footage, I gotta actually do two keystrokes. And in order for me to link the audio to that clip so I can move it around just like it was already recording in camera, that's another three keystrokes that I have to do in order to make sure everything's linked and everything is synced. That might be a little bit too many strokes for me. Now, what I can do is I can actually program those keystrokes on the loop deck, give the same label to it as a shortcut that I have, and now it's only one button. Instead of me having to go to Shift Y or Control Command L in order to link my clips, I can use one button on the loop deck system itself, and it makes that system a little bit faster. Now, if you guys haven't noticed, I might post a lot of videos here on YouTube. And one of the secrets that I have is being able to batch record, which I might talk about in another video, but it's also being able to edit very quickly as well. And with the Loop Deck CT, it actually makes that process a lot easier. Now, the physical design of the Loop Deck CT has a bunch of knobs and a bunch of scroll wheels that you can use in order to customize the different functions. Now, something that I like doing is customizing the cut to playhead, cut at the end of a playhead, or splitting up clips, and at the same time using the wheel in the middle to scrub through footage and I could pause and I could play so that way I could throw in a pair of headphones I could listen to my a-roll and I could cut clips on the fly by just pressing a button or scrolling a wheel and it makes the process very easy and once I have my a-roll done I just need b-roll and then I can make a video now it makes a lot of sense that I probably show you an example of how to use a loop deck CT properly now as we're on DaVinci Resolve I do have the original audio from the FX30 that I'm going to sync to my zoom h5 and what I used to have to do is I'd have to go to each individual clip and actually press shift y which is a custom key that I made in order to sync up the wave form to sync up the audio from the FX30 to the audio coming out of the Zoom recorder. Now what I've done is I've actually custom built that into a button on the loop deck itself, so then all I have to do is press a button and then it's already done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the clips that I want to sync up to, click on this button, and then it's already done. Now all I have to do is do that for the rest of the clips, which is actually pretty easy to do. Now you are going to have a knob that's going to zoom in and zoom out of your actual timeline itself. And sometimes you get carried away with the edit and you zoom too far in. And all I have to do is click on the knob because they are clickable and then it zooms out everything so I could see my entire timeline. Then all I have to do is just highlight the clips I need to and then I'll sync all the audio really fast. Okay, so now that everything is synced up by waveform, I also need to link the clips as well. Just because you sync up your waveforms between different recording options or different cameras doesn't mean the clips are actually linked so that way if I delete a clip or I trim a clip the audio is going to function very much just like if I was recording on the FX30 to begin with now again this was something that took multiple keystrokes I had to use control shift L in order to link my clips together and that can get a little bit tedious and a little bit annoying but what I did was I went on the loop deck CT and I mapped it to a button and now all I have to do is do the exact same thing as syncing my audio to link the clips between the two tracks of audio so what I'm going to go into here is I'm going to go again highlight this guy and then I'm just going to press the hotkey that I custom made on the loop deck CT and then it's all synced up and when I open this guy up you'll see the two links that are gonna be on the side here, signifying that the two clips between the audio are linked and they're synced. Now it's gonna function just like a normal clip. So if you externally record, this is something that you might wanna do. And I'll just do that again just for another clip so you can see it while it's zoomed in. 
And there we go. Everything is synced up. So I just gotta do this again. I'm gonna click out so I could see everything. And then I'm just going to go ahead and link all these clips together. Now that that's all done, this is honestly how I cut up my clips and cut up my A-roll. And it actually doesn't take me a very long time. As you can see here, I have about 12 minutes of A-roll that I'm talking about on this video. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the scroll wheel and the press and play button and three keys that are on the loop deck CT in order to cut up my A-roll for this video. I'm actually going to use my mouse a little bit more. There's just some things that I can't do while just using the loop deck itself. And it makes it a little bit harder when I wanna move different mouse strokes around. So it's easier for me to either bring a mouse or to use a trackpad. But in terms of actually using the keyboard, I kind of generally don't do that. Now, the way that I'm gonna use this is I'm actually beginning here. I'm gonna press play and it's going to start playing for me now if i want to make a cut here i actually have that already on the loop deck ct now you're going to see a couple of buttons on here now there's a razor tool a ripple start to playhead and an extract current node now those are a little bit of weird terminology but those three functions make up the qwe that you would originally have on your keyboard it's just now on the loop deck ct so for example if i got the intro nailed down here and that's all i need for this clip over here i'm going to click onto this guy and then extract current node and then everything from the playhead going to the right is already deleted so it'll make a cut to the next clip for anything that i need to say and if I figure out that that's kind of something I wanted to say, and maybe there's a little bit more editing in that clip, there's actually an undo button that's on here as well, which actually combines two of the keystrokes that you would normally have to do in using command control Z. So if I screwed something up, I click command control Z and everything is done and it's just fine and you don't have to stress too much. Now, once I've cut up this video, we're gonna go into the color grading portion because you can do this in two different ways, but there's still a little bit more things I gotta tell you about the Loop Deck CT in terms of how it changes your workflow. Now, I did recently pick up the Red Komodo X, which is a camera I haven't really fully reviewed yet, but I'm working on it. However, when I'm editing our 3D footage and using the color page on DaVinci Resolve, you could actually approach this in two different ways. Now, the built-in plugin for DaVinci Resolve on the Loop Deck CT does have some custom functions for the color page, where you can do your adjustments, you can copy and paste grades as you go along, and it makes that process a little bit easier and a little bit faster. However, Loop Deck does have a marketplace where you could buy different plugins to make your life easier or to add as extensions to programs you already have existing. So I could either use the color page tab that's on the Loop Deck CT or I can go up into the marketplace and I can go and buy the particular plugin just for the color page for DaVinci Resolve. Now, I am going to warn you, it does cost a little bit of money and it does take a little bit of setup, but once you have everything set up, I could designate the custom keystrokes in order for me to access different tools in my color grading tab to make the process that much easier. Now, if you wanna go from different pages on the Loop Deck CT, you can actually program that to different buttons that are going to be on the Loop Deck system. Now, I did program number five to be my color page, so all I have to do is go from editing to color, I just press the button and I'm already in the color page. Now, in the color page on the Loop Deck at the top left corner, you're gonna see there's going to be different pages that you can get different controls for. Now you can actually structure different pages to be under the same number or the same profile. It's just easy to put it up there and it already comes in the plugin so it's easy to use. Now I'm going to go over to color page number three and I'm going to add some serial nodes. Now instead of having to find the hotkey for that, once I click on my serial nodes, I add enough in order for me to have enough nodes for me to just start color grading and making those adjustments. Now I am not going to use a keyboard at all, but I am going to use the mouse to actually drag over one of my LUTs that I use for S-Log3 footage and just log footage in general and then I'll be able to make it easier for me to start my color grading process. Once I've dragged that over, things look pretty decent, but I still have to make a couple of adjustments. And that's where using some of the wheels and knobs on here is going to be a little bit easier. Now, if you want to get a dedicated plugin just for the color page, again, we're going to talk about that right after. If we're going to use something that's built in, you could use your mouse and your scroll wheel in order to make some adjustments that don't take very long. And because you're actually going to be able to use things like your primaries, use the scroll wheel over here. And you're also going to get the choice between if you want to go vertical or horizontal by clicking on either side of the scroll wheel. Now, right now I'm kind of set to vertical, which might not be my favorite thing in the world, especially when I want to make some adjustments. So what I'm going to go to do is I'm going to go to my horizontal drag. I'm going to move my mouse cursor over the temperature. And as I move it, you actually could see the temperature start to go up and down. Now, as you can see, our clip it looks pretty decent as a starting point, but there are going to be some adjustments that I'm going to use. And this is where we're going to use our mouse and we're going to use a scroll wheel on the Loop Deck CT. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a little bit backwards. And I've talked about this in color grading with LUTs that convert footage is that you want to do things under the hood. So I'm going to go into my first node. I'm already in my primaries and I'm just going to scroll my mouse over top of the things that I need to adjust. And then what I got to do is I could just use the scroll wheel that's going to be on the Loop Deck CT. And as you see it moving, 
it's actually giving control to some of those settings that are there, especially the ones that operate like dials where you can move values up and down. Now what I like about the scroll wheel is I can be a little bit more exact. Oftentimes when I use my mouse, sometimes I overshoot or sometimes I undershoot and then I have to come back and then I use my arrow keys and it becomes a little bit annoying and that's not fun for anybody. So what I like to do here is when I'm using my scroll wheel, if I need a little bit more temperature, then I can do that. But it is a bit warm. I'm gonna pull this guy down. Um, I also realized that there is a little bit more highlights than I bargained for, mostly because I shoot against a window. Um, and there we go, we actually have everything set up and this is essentially how I do a base grade. I don't do too much when color grading YouTube footage, but this is something that you can do quickly and you don't have to use the keyboard or different hotkeys in order to stress yourself out and have to spend a ton of time doing your color grades. Now, if I do wanna copy and paste this throughout my entire grade because I only have my A-roll footage, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my color page number two. I'm gonna copy this clip and then I'm also going to select all and then just paste it all over top. I take my mouse here, click on my clip, select all, paste. Now all my clips are color graded in the base grade that I wanted to and because I'm sitting in the same place, everything's exactly what I want it to look. And if anything happens between the clips that I am color grading, I can always go and make individual adjustments using the scroll wheel and my mouse. But throughout this entire thing, I didn't touch my keyboard, which is nice. Now this is going to be the paid version of the plugin when you want to use a color tab in DaVinci Resolve. Now you are gonna to have to go to the marketplace. It's gonna cost you a little bit of money, but once you're in here, there's a little bit more and actually a lot of bit more customization that you can use in order to get the things that you want. Now, right here, I am going to have my red Komodo X footage and I have been using this for a little bit and I actually don't find the color grading that difficult. Now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click onto here and then you're gonna notice that my panel actually looks a little bit different. Now this is how it's going to work. There's gonna be different buttons assigned to the different options that you have in terms of how you're going to navigate through the color tab. So for example, if I wanna to go to my primary color wheels, I'll click onto that and it's actually, it's already there. Now, what you're gonna notice that on the actual loop now, what you're gonna notice on the Loop Deck CT itself, you're gonna have things like your tint, your temperature, your contrast, your pivot, all the other things that you're gonna to make to you, all the other things that you're going to use to make your basic adjustments. And what's really cool is once I press on temperature, the mouse cursor is gonna automatically go right over the temperature and I could use my scroll wheel in order to change the values that are going to be on there. Now, I actually am not using the mouse at all in order to do this. And when I'm done with it, it is what it is. Now, if I wanna to change to say contrast, I click on a contrast, and I could use that scroll wheel as well to give myself what I want. Now, for the sake of this video, the way I'm going to edit this red footage is I'm just gonna use some of my LUTs and I'm gonna go under the hood just like I did on the S-Log3 footage. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm just gonna press undo on right over here. I'm gonna go down to my one and I've actually programmed. I'm gonna go over to number two and then I have my nodes that are on here as well. So kind of like how the node key was on the beginning example, there's also the same thing here as well. So I could add a couple of nodes. Then all I'm gonna do is use my mouse, go to red, there's only one red LUT in general, and I'm actually gonna go one back. This is gonna convert my red footage into Rec 709, and then I could put one of my LUTs on top if I want to. It's a step you don't necessarily have to take, but I just like doing it. And I'm gonna go over to here, click on the node after that, and I'm gonna put the kind of finishing LUT on top and I'm gonna use Terraform and that's how it's gonna start off and that's how it's going to look. Now, if you actually wanna pick up some of these finishing LUTs for free, the link is in the description, but that's not necessarily important. Now, if at any point in time, I wanna see a full screen version because I am just editing on a 13 inch MacBook, I'm gonna go back to my page number one there's a page I could scroll over. And as we were talking about programming some of the hotkeys you normally would use and just putting them directly on the Loop Deck CT, I go to my cinema viewer and I can get a full screen look of how everything is starting to look. And that way I can get a little bit better of a view and how my color grade is looking and where I need different adjustments. But I'm gonna just go back here for a little bit and then I'm just gonna make some minor adjustments. For the sake of this video, making it not too long, I'm gonna go back to number one. I'm gonna go to my primary wheels and then I'm just gonna mess around my highlights and my shadows just to get a decent base grade and something that's passable for a client, especially for this particular type of shoot. And generally that's a quick rundown of how I would use a Loop Deck CT in order to color grade in the version that comes with the Loop Deck and another paid version. Now with the paid version, I am gonna remind you, you have to do something called key binding, where you're actually going to map different keystrokes and different mouse movements onto the Loop Deck CT. So when you do press certain buttons, it actually goes to the option that you want. And you can find that right on the panel itself in order to make your life a little bit easier. And 
that way, whatever workflow that you have, it's still gonna be manageable while using the system and using DaVinci Resolve to make things move a little bit quicker. I also wanna add that while using the Loop Deck CT, I still use a mouse. There are certain things that I'm just gonna need a mouse for that's gonna make it a little bit easier. However, a lot of the stuff that I would use on my keyboard, I kind of don't really use anymore because I have the Loop Deck and everything is at the touch of a button. Now, I do use a mouse for certain things just because I feel it's faster and I haven't fully converted yet. However, you probably can customize this enough where you might not need a mouse at all and you could probably do a lot of your editing exclusively on the Loop Deck CT. Now, that being said, a special shout out to Loop Deck for actually sending me the CT. I've been using it for the last couple of weeks and it's really started to grow on me and I've also been able to make content pretty fast with it. Now, if you guys do wanna check it out, the link is in the description down below. And if you're someone that might be backed up on client work or maybe you're just not that fast at editing because it's hard to find all the hot keys and shortcuts, you could actually program into this device and you can make the process a lot easier. Now, I am assuming that you guys probably wanna see another video. In fact, I'm gonna leave one right over here. But that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video or at the very least you learned a thing or two, but I'll see you in the next one. Peace.